Hello, beautiful. Today we're watching some people try to color their hair from red to what? And the reason why that's so hard for me to say is because that's one of the hardest things to do, love. And I'm just not convinced you guys at home have the necessary tools or experience to actually do this well. Sometimes you shock me. So let's see if today is one of those days where you just somehow make a miracle happen. Our first video is by Hannah Bear. Hi, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing something very exciting because we're gonna be bleaching my hair. Oh. Red and something tells me it might be box dye, but I don't know. I should let you tell me what's going on. But her hair is so red that it matches the wall behind her. <laughs> and I really miss being blonde. I don't know why I strayed from it to be honest. I just lost sight of what was important. I feel that so hard. You guys know I had red hair for so long. There was one point where I was just like, mm, blonde is just calling my name back. I got it back. So this is what we're starting off with. Um, it is pretty old at this point, so it, it does look a little bit. There's all kinds of colors going on. We got deep red, we got a natural brown root, we got some pink on the ends, we got some fading going on. There's also clearly lighter pieces in the front and kind of highlights all throughout. So trying to lighten all this evenly is going to be so hard. Good luck. We're going back to being blonde or as close to white as we can get it, but did you say white? <sighs> Sorry, we're not just doing blonde, we're trying to get white. Let me hold my boobs because that one was scary. Guys, red color molecules are so large and in charge, and once they are stuck in that hair, it doesn't want to let it go. The hair is like, please, this is my best, you know, like, don't let it go. And the bleach is like, ah, please, this is my job to get this out of your hair. And the red molecules are like, no, I like it here, it's comfy. And the hair strand's like, yeah, no, we like it. That's a quick rundown of what goes on in the hair when you try and lift out red. Color rewind hair stripper, bleach powder, 30 volume, deep moisture hair mask. We got the necessary items. I am so happy she's using a color remover before she then goes in with the bleach and the 30 volume I think 30 volume is perfect for her. Maybe not the front of her hair. It looks a little compromised But you know, this is an at-home job. Nothing's gonna be perfect We're gonna use what we got and take what we get. We're on a good path right now. Let's see if we Go a different direction accidentally because <laughs> that, that does happen sometimes. Hair strippers and color removers often smell like eggy. So color remover is going to remove all of the artificial color in her hair. Most color removers also alter your natural hair color. You know, if you have some roots that are your natural color, it will also lighten those because there are lightening ingredients inside color remover most of the time. Not every single one, but most of them. You're going to want to only apply this to the parts that are red. Let's see if she does. That. I'm turning the camera off, but you get the idea. We're just sticking this horrible, stinky, horrible, stinky song. Look at that. Look at that egg. Here is what we're working with. Apparently, I have to leave it on for an hour. I'll let you know how it goes. No! First strike today. Oh, you were doing so good, and now we're not doing so good. We applied this to just the entire head. Bro, I see those natural roots. We should not apply color remover if you're not trying to remove the color. Apply the color remover where you're trying to remove color pigment. Artificial color pigment, that is. But we went all over, which, you know, we'll see. We'll see what results we get. Oh my God, it's in my eyes. Oh my God. Why are you putting your eyes? Stop. She just caught the color remover in her eyes. No, this looks chaotic and messy. I have no hope that the results are going to be good at this point. Whoa, oh, it's so cute. Wait, this is amazing. The color remover she got does not lighten your natural color. That's amazing news. She got so lucky because most of them do and that would have been tragic. She would have ended up with some yellow or orange roots or even white overprocessed roots and the ends of her hair would also be overprocessed. So she got really lucky and she didn't go blind from rinsing the color remover into her eyes so that's also great we're either gonna leave it till tomorrow or if my hair is completely full we're gonna leave it till next week okay she got some decent results it's not super light and the color remover didn't do like the most ever it removed like the deepest darkest pigments of that red from her hair and now it's a bit lighter so she got a good base to work on now with the lightener let's see where this goes so we're doing the middle parts first and then we'll do the roots and the ends at the end 
whoa, sorry, my ears are tingling. Ooh, whoa, <laughs> what did you just say? You just said you're gonna start with the mids and then go to your ends and your roots. Oh, <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh my God. The deepest red pigments are in that middle section of her hair. So she's first lightening that. And then she's gonna work on these second lightest pieces, which is I think her ends. And then she's gonna do her roots after once everything else has lightened, which is just great. That's how she's gonna get an even result. And we're gonna actually probably end up with a really good even palette. It's just a little worrisome that she has all those blonde pieces in between that she is overlaying with some more lightener. Also the technique on the back of the hand. Oh girls, what? You guys are good. This is some of the best sectioning and application I've ever seen on a DIY YouTube video. The middle part's done and has been on for a while. The roots have just been finished. What? What? This looks so good so far. And it looks like it's very evenly lightened. You guys really outdid yourself. Here is where it all started to go wrong because as I was washing my hair, I started to notice that it was just breaking off and falling out into my hands. I think it was just the ends since they've been bleached a lot in the past. It was really gummy and it would just pull apart without any resistance. No. <laughs> oh, her hair looks so gummy. Shit. We were doing so good and now we're not. Oh my God, I knew she was overlapping on those highlights she previously put in. That is way too much lightener. I just hope they can save it somehow. Obviously like some of the parts are a little bit more orangey than others. I definitely don't think we'll be doing any more bleaching because I don't want my hair to fall out. Too late, it already has. You need some recalibrate bone repair treatment in your life. <laughs> don't pull your hair, please, Hannah. Oh no! It might just be the ends, because they were a bit frizzled anyway. She's like, your hair's fine, babe, your hair's fine. As she pulls it and it falls out. Are we not looking at the same hair right now, babe? What's going on here? There seems to be a disconnect. Does not look okay to me. We're going to tone it, and then we're gonna add an ashy tone to my roots. Definitely compromised. She needs some bond builder in there. Hopefully they do a good job with this toning situation, but I've kind of lost all hope at this point. Um. That toner did absolutely nothing. Why did it do nothing? What did you use? What? They toned it with like something and so now we're ready to see the results and I'm like really scared about it. Okay, so here is the finished result. I am really happy with how my hair turned out and the toner helped a lot. I just felt more like myself than I have in a long time. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. <gasps> You guys did it again. Somehow you ended up with a beautiful result. Listen, I know there's breakage in there somewhere, but overall it looks shiny and sort of healthy. Um, And also I really like the color. I think it's a pretty like warm, creamy blonde and it looks really good with your skin tone. And I do really like it much better than the red you previously had. So you really threw me for a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Up next, we have a video by wavy blonde. I had a beautiful natural blonde hair. I suddenly decided that it's too boring. I decided to color it red. I thought okay maybe it will wash off. This is how it was washing off. I decided okay I'm probably not gonna get rid of this color easily. I decided to do something very drastic. I picked up bleach and developer. I mixed these things with a head and shoulders shampoo. This is where we are now. I bought two packs of color oops. Okay, so she started off coloring her hair with a semi-permanent color. It was dark, it wasn't washing out, and then she did a bleach bath, and now she got some color oops, and now we're gonna lighten it, and hopefully <laughs> this removes her color, because she does not want to be red anymore. She wants to be lighter, I think, or blonde. Yeah, she wants to be blonde, it says in the title, so, okay. <laughs> I'm going with uh, another developer and two permanent hair dye, seven for my roots, and in eight for the rest of the land. I'm not too sure what's going to happen. I'm very hopeful. Yeah, I'm petrified. I'm scared. I'm horrified. I'm nervous. I'm... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's a plan. That's an interesting plan. All right. I don't understand the plan, but there's it it definitely a plan. So she's gonna use color mover and then she's gonna go with permanent hair color, which color doesn't lift color, so she's gonna have to figure that one out. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do it like that. I would have probably done color mover, but then we probably would have had to do a little bleaching moment of some sort and then uh, a dying permanent color. Okay, not a permanent 
colored because we do not need any more lifting power. But you know what? You guys always seem to shock me, so let's see how this one goes. Okay, so her hair is starting off very pink, sort of red, with a long natural root. So those two pieces have to be treated differently or else you'll end up with some weird banding or your roots are lighter than your ends. A lot of things can happen. My strategy here was to start from the top of my head and move to the side, uh, strand by strand, cover it, and then move further down. You can see that I'm working this product in. She's gonna need to apply this way faster because once it touches her hair, it starts processing. And um, we want everything to process the same speed, you know? So we gotta get it on every mids and ends really, really quickly to make sure everything is processed equally, or you gotta rinse out one section and then the other, but she's gotta work faster. I have no idea how this happens. Just look at this. How? Just tell me. How did this pink hair turn green? <laughs> what a disaster. Oh my god. Why is your hair green? I actually don't know why your hair is green. And also, you missed some spots. Yeah, that sucks. The funny part is that red is across the color wheel from green. So usually in this case, you would use some red in order to cancel out the green to get a nice blonde color. But you have been trying to get red out of your hair for a while. So I think the last thing you want to do is put more red on your hair. And you see how her natural color got lightened. You don't want to apply color oops to natural hair because it's made to lift artificial color. Ooh, those spots. There's spots everywhere. Brown, no. And they're so random. They're like inside her hair, here in the front. And the, mm, ah, she's got a lot of things going on now. This is a sticky situation. This color needs to be mixed one to one. One part of the color and one part of developer. Okay, so she's sticking with her plan, unfortunately. Uh, and she's going in with some permanent color. Honestly, all you have to do at this point, you gotta fix those little spots everywhere. That's definitely a moment going on. But I would just do a pastel pink demi-permanent color over the this green and it should perfectly cancel out the green and leave you with a natural looking blonde. That is how color theory works and uh, that is how it would work. I mean, you're probably gonna do something that's way more difficult and way more damaging on your hair, but I guess we'll see what happens with that as well. Okay, so she's doing a good application. She's doing her roots first and then she's going on to the ends, which is great. I love to see it because she wants her roots to be a little bit darker than her ends. Here, I'm also trying to work pretty quick with this. Very good with the application. She's so thorough and clean with the sectioning. That was a challenge, but we're done. Now let's wait and see what is going to happen. It looks quite promising already. All right, it's processing. Let's see what we get. Let's have a look. Not too bad. I know it's still a bit greenish. It's not that bright color anymore. And I think I could make this work. All right. I mean, it's looking still pretty green. I don't know how you're gonna make this work unless you cancel it out with some red. I'm going to use some conditioner. I'm going to mix it up with Umberto Giannini Cherry Blossom, as you can see here. I'm going to make it much, much lighter. Oh my God, she actually is doing a pastel red or pink or whatever she's doing but she's actually putting that over the green. Guys, I'm so proud of you. You know color theory, yes. Here we are. What do you think of this? Let me just show you all around. I'm so, so happy with this. Look how natural this color looks. How bouncy my hair still feels. And I still have curls, you guys. I thought I'm gonna lose all of my curls up to this, but I still have them. I'm very, very happy with this. Oh my God, how do you guys do it? How do you do crazy shit? And it comes out good. Her hair is, looks so healthy too. And it's so bouncy and curly still. What? The only critique I would say is that it still looks a bit green, but the little root smudge you did, the end color, everything came together and looks really good and really natural on you. And you actually succeeded in getting that red out. Killer job. Up next, we have a video by Shay Hudson. I am going to be drastically changing my hair. As you can see, my hair is very red up here. Yeah, your hair is dark red. It's like brown and it's like, Auburn, 
wine red. If you know anything about red wine, we know uh, it stains. After the Arctic Fox started washing out of my hair, I was like, well, fuck. So I was like, I'm gonna go get a red permanent box dye. Oh my God, she put permanent red color all over her head. And now she's gonna try and get it out. Oh. <laughs> I got the Feria red permanent hair color, put it all over my head. Now here we are. So now I have these extremely bright red roots. And then at the ends, this nasty swampy concoction of a f travesty. Oh my god, she has so much going on in her hair right now. Oh. I'm first gonna remove all the color from my hair and then I'm gonna go in with some bleach and I'm going to do the teasing method. I'm also gonna go in with foils, fine tooth comb. I'm gonna tease it to the roots so that there's a little bit of a blanket of safety at that root. I'm gonna slap it together with some foils. I have no idea what that plan was. It sounded very intricate and very scary. <laughs> that is all I know. Kind of want it to look a little bit more of like a warm blonde highlight. Warm blonde highlight with all Oh my god. We're in for a treat with this one. Alright, we're going in with the color oops like everybody else did, which is a good thing. But she's gonna apply it to her roots just like everybody else, which I think is fine because it looks like the red color is all the way to her roots, so she doesn't have any natural color on her head right now, so that is fine. But you should probably apply it to the mids and ends first because it is gonna lighten your roots brighter than your mids and ends if you apply it there first because of the heat from your scalp. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll just see what happens. I am back from rinsing out all of the color oops and drying my hair. It looks extremely dry. Oh. Oh my god, it's like swamp green and very dry. And the ends are so much darker than the roots. Oh gosh, she's got a lot of work to do on this to make it look good. I don't even know where she's gonna go from here. First, I'm gonna start with going about two to three inches down from my roots and just ball Balayaging the mids and the ends, putting each section into foils and letting that process for like 15 minutes before I go up higher to these roots sections. And then I'm gonna add some more balayage into that. Now I'm hoping that that kind of fixes this like nasty yellow color I have in my roots. Okay. What she's attempting to do is a very technical thing, you know, trying to balayage your own hair and do it the ends and mids first and then go up to the roots. She's not doing her entire head at once. She's doing it like within the highlighted sections. I would have rather her just lighten her entire head. It would have been much easier and much more effective. Um, this is just really complicated. I don't necessarily want to be platinum. And I don't think that it's going to bring my hair to that level. Well, good, because you're not gonna. Sorry to break it to you. I don't really know what that little teasing moment is doing for her. It's really not doing anything. Thing. Like if you're gonna tease the hair in order to make that balayage really blend, you gotta really tease it. Like there has to be a big bunch of hair stuck at your root to know that you really tease tease that stuff. Did that make any sense to any of you? I hope so, because I'm not repeating it. This is the state of my hair. Oh my god, she has so many foils in her hair. Oh! As you can see, I have some very beautiful white blonde tips. I did previously have bleached ends, so it just lifted easier. Throughout, you can see there is still a pretty good variation of decent blonde. I will say it looks a whole lot better than what we had before. That is pretty good. I might have judged too hard. She definitely got a more even lift overall. It's still very green slash yellow, but at least it's better. I would definitely cancel out the green with some red. You know, a very, very, very light red. And then she would end up with a good color. I picked up the Wella T28 Color Charm Toner. This is a natural blonde toner. What we need right now is not a blonde toner. What we need is red. Plus that Wella color is a permanent color and um, we don't want to damage the hair any more than necessary. Like we're going to go with more permanent color. That's going to be a lot for her hair at this state. I'm very nervous about her and snapping off. <laughs> Final result of my at-home balayage. I am actually so in love with how it turned out. A warm honey blonde. This color suits me so well. Gives my skin this glowy look to it. I feel like it brings out the warmth in my skin. I feel like I'm living my hot girl summer fantasy right now. I mean, it looks very similar to what it looked like, you know, a few minutes ago. It's still a bit green. It looks good on you. It's definitely wearable. I just would prefer it to be less green personally, but that's just just me.
me. Um, you do you. And it seems like you're really happy with your hair, so I'm happy for you. And maybe just like some highlights in the front. The darkness is very down low, and we can bring it up higher, but you're definitely not red anymore, so you did something. Well. That was spooky. Oh my God, those were some crazy transformations and they made it work somehow. Decent job. That's all for today, guys. If you wanna check out my hair care line or my hair color line, you can do so with the links right down below or go to xmonohair.com. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life and I'll see you next time. Bye.